Look at all these seedlings of butternut squash and cantaloupe growing all here, all together on top of each other in this tiny little region. Yeah, in an urban environment, you kind of have to cramp things together so you can optimize the space and grow as much as you can. So today we're going to talk about optimizing your backyard. Welcome to Self-Sufficient Urban Gardening. I'm going to show you everything I have over there in my backyard. But before that, let me show you the area view of the house so you can see how much space I have to plant. Here you can see the aerial view of the house taken from Google Maps. You can see the front yard, which is near the street. And then you can see the tiny little side yard that we have where I have that tiny little raised bed. And also the backyard, which is mostly a cemented patio. If you measure the entire area where our house is, the lot area, it's about 8,700 square feet or about 810 square meters, which is not that much, but it's a good sized lot. However, with this big cemented patio, we're only left with about 1,250 square feet to plant. That's where our garden is, all the way in the back which is just over a hundred square meters. Which, you know, it's not a lot for planting a garden to be self-sufficient, but that's what we have to work with. Not to mention that this area where you see here, it's a slope. So you can see the retaining wall that I built right in the middle of it. So the bottom part now, near the cemented patio, is somewhat flat, while the upper part is still somewhat of a slope. Now let's take a look at the backyard using this picture that I took from the roof of my house. So you can see here the entire backyard, everything in one shot. So let's check out everything that I have one by one. First here on the right I have a banana tree, which was transplanted from a neighbor. More about that in videos in the future. Right next to it, right here, I have a papaya tree that I grew from seed. Right behind the papaya tree, I have big, Aussie, red, delicious tomatoes. Even only here at the right side, you can tell how I cramp things together, right? Next to it, you have corn. We just have one little corn growing, but that's enough. To the right of the corn, I just planted some seedlings of butternut squash and cantaloupe. And all the way in the little corner on the right, I have radish and butternut squash growing. You can see the vines of the butternut squash coming down into the cemented patio. And I know you won't believe it, but right here behind the corn, I have a dwarf orange tree. And all the way back on the top of the slope on the right, I have hiding behind a temporary shade of a few wood sticks, a very small loquat tree. Loquat is not very well known around the country, but it's very common here in Southern California. The fruit is really delicious and you can find these trees on backyards all around in Southern California. If you're thinking nothing else fits, I still have mint here on this right side. And on top of that, to the right side, I have patty pen squash. And that's it! Well, there's one more thing, if believe it or not. I have okra growing right there, sharing the space. Here's a little footage of that area. You can see the banana tree and the butternut squash vines, the papaya tree, the tomato in the back, the orange tree, the little seedlings that I planted, the corn, and the okra. Take a look at this okra growing right here. And also the patty pan squash. Huge, isn't it? Now back to the overall view, we have here to the left of the mint a little fig tree that is just starting to grow. And on top of that, behind the retaining wall, I have my raised garden bed where I have the beets and potatoes and tomatoes and blueberries growing back there. And finally, the huge tomato forest that I have, the queen of my backyard. I love that tomato forest. And here behind the retaining wall we have the tomato forest and the big 
red tomatoes here. We have um, sweet potato growing here, summer squash growing there, and the beets right there. And at last, the blueberry bushes, one, two. And down in front of the fig, I have a little raised garden bed where I have had a lot of pumpkins and now I'm growing some squash, summer squash and other types of squash. Behind the palm tree that you see dividing the garden in half, I have a big peach tree. Actually, it's a couple of peach trees right there. Even on the other side, I also have another peach tree so you can see how much we love peaches. Continuing to the left side, here we have, under this shade, a kabucha squash. And right under, in the small raised garden bed, I have a few things growing, including okra, watermelon, and butternut squash. Here you can see the little planter with okra starting to grow right here. Another little okra right here. And then that's uh, summer squash couple of seedlings of cantaloupe and butternut squash and here on the other side we have watermelon another one of okra a little bigger and a big okra plant right there to the right of the kabucha squash I have some more big red tomatoes growing and all the way to the left, in that tiny little corner over there, under the peach tree, I have some beets and summer squash growing. And finally, here in front of the okra and watermelon, in this region here, is a new raised garden bed, where I have been composting these past few weeks. So that's it! In every tiny little space, you can plant something. Yeah, if I grew only okra here in this raised garden bed, I would have a little bit more okra production. However, with a little bit less okra production because, you know, it's sharing the energy of the soil with the other things that I have growing here, such as watermelon, pedipen squash, summer squash, and butternut squash, I can have a little bit of everything. And yeah, sharing this energy and the nutrients from the soil will give some to each plant. Of course, they're not, the roots are not really connected, but it's well known that plants like to be together. Even plants that touch each other sometimes produce more. So yeah, that's my recommendation. Put everything you can in your backyard, enjoy everything you can, every little space, and plant everything so you can have the biggest production and you can feed your family and be self-sufficient. Let me know in the comments below if you liked this video, if you also plant everything together in your backyard, subscribe to the channel and enjoy your garden.